All right, what's up, everyone? It's NFL Week 5, and this is the game plan where we plan out our bets, we plan out our DFS play, and we plan it out with one of the sharpest minds across betting, across DFS, across games. He's a games master. John, Statsational, Alessia, in the hizzy. What's up, my man? What's going on? Let's get ready today, man. Last, we were just talking, little last day of MLB. I'm going to start putting that behind us, and now... Uh... A lot of focus on the NFL. Yeah, it's like you're still playing MLB DFS. What are you crazy? Yeah. Who's what? But I guess you got to do it for uh, fin- uh, the last day of the season. Last day. I just finished watching your scratching and Survivor show. Been crushing Survivor, avoiding the pitfalls all year long. So that's been really cool. I love that you do that. It's so intense. Like I'm just picking a team I think can win that week and not bust me and not's going to be super chalk. You're playing two, three, four. You're playing. You're playing chess. Yeah, Everybody's well, you know, we're, we're we're trying to give a an event, you know, trying to give everyone a little bit of an advantage in their pool. I mean, if you if you were one out of a hundred picks, you got a one percent shot. We could probably increase it to two two and a half percent, which is huge, right? If you can double your chances, um, that's tremendous. And it's it's just a lot of game theory. People get caught up in survivor pools in in a few things, but it's like one, they'll just take whatever team they think is the best team to win that week. Yeah, just trying and, to survive another week, which yeah. is not the right way to play it. No, you yeah. gotta gotta plan ahead, especially the big pool. Listen, your survivor show, and and I don't, we don't want to go into it. That's not what we're talking about here. But check it out on the Sharp, um, Sharp App YouTube channel, or follow John and and check that out as well. I've retweeted it. So if you're playing Survivor, you want to be watching that show, and get right into it before actually we get into the main slate. And normally we're going to cover the main slate of games in this breakdown before we even get to it. I want to talk a little bit about the Thursday night game. Now, you, you might be watching this after a Thursday night happened. Who knows? But, man, I got to tell you something. This looks like an under to end all unders. It's at 42 at this point. The line's been moving. Let's see. Um, yeah, it's at 42 at this point. The line's been moving down ever since the news that Jonathan Taylor's at. I mean, is it too easy? Is that This feels like too easy. It's all easy. I just don't want to bet it. But I bet. Yeah, this one, I this one looks crazy. It looks crazy easy, right? Because I mean, Denver's offense has just been atrocious, but the defense is, is beyond it's solid. I mean, defense, it's a very good defense. Elite cornerback taking out Michael Pittman. There's nothing going on for the and and the Colts are what scare me. Like, how are they going to score? Yeah, the, the Taylor thing is meaningless in as far as the game goes. I know everyone. Oh my God, Taylor's the number one draft pick in fantasy. Doesn't mean anything to the line. Like they'll be just as good or bad. Like he's not changed. He hasn't affected the line. Interesting. Uh, yeah, it, it just won't. I told, I mean, at most it was going to move this a half a point, but it hasn't. Um, you know, this, if it was going to move, this would have been up to four. So any move from here on in has nothing to do with Taylor. That, and we kind of figured that the Taylor wasn't going to play anyway because he was in a walking boot yesterday. So, yeah, you know, that was kind of baked in. It didn't look good for JT, but he's out and the Colts just got nothing. I mean, they're going to have to throw to Mo Alley Cox like 30 times in this game. I mean, we've just keep seeing these Denver games. It's like a grind out teens, you know? So yeah, the under, I said this when it came out, I'm like, boy, this, it was 43 and a half. And I'm like, you know, it's starting to come down, but it's, it looks almost too good to be true, which, uh, which that that's what scared, scared me. me. I was like, this yeah. is like the most obvious bet I've ever seen in my, uh, you know, ever, but a uh, fuck it. I ham, I hammered it. I didn't care. I just, I just hammered it. I hammered the under and I hammered, um, Denver, money line because I don't trust Denver to score enough to cover any sort of over three point spread. So I just said, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to take the money line. I feel like Denver's going to win. I checked the John Statsational Alessia power rankings on the sharp app and you've got Denver way up there. Colts, not so much. So I'm, I'm keeping it simple, keeping it simple, John. Um, Denver, we're right. out there running back too. We might get a little lap. We won't get lap Murray tomorrow, but, but we'll be getting them soon. I I don't even know who the running back is for Denver, but Melvin Gordon didn't look that good. No, he had too many week. fumbles. He's had five fumbles, I think, uh, including he, he, the preseason. That's a I don't care anymore kind of situation. We'll see. We'll see. But it's not looking good for Melvin either. Um, all right, so let's get into the main slate. NFL Week 5. And our first game on the docket, you've got the Titans heading out to Washington to take on the Commanders. Titans... Two and a half point favorites. Interesting. Um, 42 and a half point total low. Uh, Titans, not that good of a team. Washington, not that good of a team. Uh, Wentz coming off a couple of bad weeks, but he looked good the first couple of weeks of the season, putting up big numbers. 
Um, how do you see this one going down? And um, are you a little bit surprised? Like, what do you think of these lines? How do you, how are you playing this? Yeah. So it's like minus two or plus two and a half, depending on the book right now, 42 and a half on the total. Um, AI models actually seeing value on the, uh, on the Titans in this game. So we've got a little value there. I don't have a play on it. You know, this, this one sits right where I kind of like, a matter of fact, I think I just put, cause I just put some teasers in and, um, and this was one of them. So I, I always like, you know, I, we talk about it. I like teasing them through the three and the seven. So I'll take the, I'll take Washington teased up. Uh, looks a little scary. I mean, you know, Washington just has not been impressive at all. And uh, Tennessee, you just kind of never know what you're going to get. Tennessee's like one of those teams that they play a really good team and it seems like they beat them. They play a, a, a crappy team and the game seems to be tight. So we'll hope for a tight game here. I'm going to take this uh, teased up to, to the uh, eight and a half. Yeah, I, I like that approach as well. I like Washington um, here in general. I, I don't think the Titans are that good, but but I do like um, Derrick Henry as a DFS play anytime he's favored in a game. Um, on the Washington side, it, it looks really interesting. Jahan Dotson got knocked around last week. It's going to be curious. I'm, I'm curious to see if he plays and if he comes back. But um, as far as like some DFS plays, you know, Curtis Samuels continues to be a really, really good play. They had a couple of bad matchups the last couple of weeks. We did not like Wentz in those matchups either, but this is a good matchup. And I actually think that um, the Washington offense is maybe being just a smidge underrated in this. I did have good, good pieces across the board. So I like Curtis Samuel, man, is this the time? Is this the week, the miracle week that Terry McLaurin finally does anything? It could be, it could be T Titans don't have an elite, you know, defensive player. They don't have a, an elite defensive back to shut down your WR one. They, they're not that team. So, you know, when they went up against Dallas, we knew it wasn't happening. But against the Titans, I think it can be Terry McLaurin's season. So, you know, he hasn't done it in years. G you know, tournament, interesting tournament play. But um, there are some pieces on that Washington offense that I'm interested in. And, of course, Derrick Henry on the Titans. All right, game number two on the main slate. Um, again, newly crowned top team in the AFC. One of the top teams, the Jacksonville Jaguars. At home against the Houston Texans, John, the same Houston Texans team that just gave up three touchdowns. They, they are bleeding fantasy points to running backs. Khalil Herbert put up massive numbers, and then Austin Eckler put up massive numbers. They are the worst team in the league against the running back position. Jacksonville getting ready to style at home for the for the uh for the Florida faithful in this one. What do you think? This Jacksonville team, I, I think, is legit. So I mean they've played a tough schedule. Don't I, don't let the two two record fool you. I mean they they jumped out early last week against Philly. And I think Philly's probably the best team right now in the NFC. So this Jacksonville team's legit. I think the seven is a number they could easily cover. So I'm kind of leaning to that side right now. As far as the uh, the money, it's kind of split right now. It's fifty fifty on on the money. The total we're, we're just seeing most of it come in. Uh, overwhelming number of it come in uh, to the underside. So the total on that forty three and a half. It's another one that looks like it could be low. I think it's a sneaky over though in this game. Yeah, interesting on the yeah on the overside. I, I could see Jacksonville just kind of like I said styling a little bit in this one. Houston is not a good defensive team, and they could score a little bit. Um, Houston, so I think they'll um, at least make a game of it on the DFS angles. You know, it's Christian Kirk. I, I'm I'm really interested in James Robinson. I want to love James Robinson. It's tough though. I really want to look a little bit at the usage charts a little bit more before I get comfortable. Jamal Agnew is out there last week getting touchdowns. So it was a little weird with the usage, but I think they go right back to Robinson here and it's such a great matchup. It's hard to ignore it. Um, Houston side. I mean, Damian Pierce. Nah, I like, I like my running backs, you know, on favored teams. If I can get them that way or Jacksonville defense is not horrible. I'll have some interest in Pierce, but not, not somewhere. I, you know, I don't know yet. I, I'm, I'm undetermined on him. I normally like favorites at home. I, he's not, he's not checking off a lot of boxes, but I like the price on him. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know, taking that plus seven running back against a team. This defense has been pretty good. I think, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I've got him ranked fairly high in the top ten in defense. They've been good against the rush, good against the pass. So I'd be a little leery here. This is not a game stackable type of game for me. No, no, definitely not Not how I'd be looking to attack it. And a reminder, John is here representing Sharp App. Make sure you check it out. John's got all his plays. He's got breakdowns for every game, breakdowns for all the 
the the island games everything's happening over sharp app a lot of it's free so make sure you download the sharp app and check out john and all of his content i'm there as well breaking down giving out my picks and i've been crushing it this year not gonna lie fucking killing it on the sports book you have been I blame Gargano and you a little bit for that more than myself, but whatever. Been killing it. You're doing well, man. Listen to sharp people. That's the idea. Um, all right. Next up, we've got the Bears heading out to Minnesota, taking on the Vikings, seven-point underdogs on the road. The Vikings are coming in here. You know, seven-point favorites at home. It's in the Dome. Dalvin Cook healthy kind of interested in Dalvin Cook in this game a little bit. I haven't played him much this year. Hasn't done a whole lot, but you know, those Bears games, the, this is that same Bears team that just got torched by Saquon Barkley last week for just monster yard. If the touchdowns weren't, I think got one touchdown, but over 130 uh, rushing yards. It looks bad on the Bears side. The only player that you can even look at is Khalil Herbert. If David Montgomery is out and if David Montgomery's in, I don't know if there's anything going on there. Um, I'm probably not super high on the Vikings offense as a whole in this spot because these bear games are just gross and they're ugly and they're low scoring and they're slow. And you just don't expect, I don't see a Kirk cousins, like Justin Jefferson, 40 point explosion here. Yeah. That's why I kind of like the bears with the points, just because I, I, I think they kind of play this close to the vest. Obviously they're just not willing to throw the ball all that much. I, we had the over on uh, fields last week at like 148 and a half, which it, it did go over on his passing. I think it might've been the first game this year. He's, he's thrown for over a hundred. So they are throwing it a little bit more, but still uh, let's not get too excited about, about the passing offense last week. This team right now, I don't, obviously they don't have a lot of confidence in fields throwing it. And so you can't play any of the, of any of the pass catching uh, uh, players in this game. But because of that, they're, Listen, they're two and two. They're trying to play every game as close as they possibly can. So seven points is a lot. Now, if they get behind a lot, which they really haven't done yet in these games, I guess the you know the Giants kind of had Giants kind of had this game in hand. But you know, if this team gets behind, then you're in trouble with the seven. But I think this is this could be a closer game maybe than than the experts think, and I'll take the seven points. Yeah, I don't I don't mind that spot there. Just just play it for the close game um, component. Uh, and again, not much DFS happening here outside of maybe Dalvin Cook, maybe Khalil Herbert, but I'm definitely not. Again, I like to get running backs from teams that are favored. And the minute it's an underdog like the Bears, they're still going to lean on the run no matter what. That team can't, they won't throw. They will only run the football no matter how far behind they are. Minnesota's been good against the, the run as well. You know, and their running game has just not gotten going. And, and part of that, I think, is just. You know, it's the new coaching step. I, I think there's a little de-emphasis on the run. They're trying to utilize the uh, the pass catching options in Minnesota. So normally seven point spread, yeah, you like you like the uh, you like the running back, but I'd be a little careful with Cook as well. Yeah, it reminds me to pop up the uh, the old power rankings for these, and we can get a little sense of of uh, some of those expectations. So um, let's move on to the next game. Here we've got. The Lions heading out to New England to take on the Patriots. This one's got a 45 and a half point total with the Patriots as home three point favorites. Uh, I'm not really sure what's going on at quarterback for the Patriots at this point. Brian Hoyer um, comes out concussed last week. They brought in the rookie uh, QB whose name escapes me at the moment. And they, they have played all right. But if I know my. What do you call the opposite of beloved? My be hated Patriots, because I'm a Jets fan, so I'm supposed to hate the Patriots. I do. I do hate them. Um, they're just going to run the football down Detroit's face this whole game. It's going to be rushing, 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 and defense. That's what I expect to happen here. Devin Har uh, uh, Damian Harris, Ramondre Stevenson. If the Patriots are winning and that minus three is correct, those running backs are going to score more than once. What do you think? Well, you got to look at that total. And I kind of agree with you as you were describing what you what you think the game script is going to be. And that's a pretty high total. I mean, it's up 46 and a half in some places. So, again, it kind of looks like I, 
I mean, it kind of looks like they're sucking you in. I guess part of that is just the fact that Detroit, the Detroit game last week, as you know, uh, you know, was in the nineties. So I guess that has part of it um, in there, but listen, New England, this is the way Belichick's going to play it. And the way he played it last year and the way they've really played it so far this year, um, he doesn't have the, he doesn't have Tom Brady there. He doesn't have the great quarterback. Doesn't have a great offense, but his defense is still solid and he's going to play it in a way where he's going to try to win these games tight and low scoring. So, um, you know, I, yeah, the Detroit offense has definitely had its moments here this year. They've been pretty good as a matter of fact. Uh, but I think this is a, it's going to be a little bit different animal inside of new England. You know, you're up in Foxborough. I think it's low scoring. I think that's the lean here on this game is you got to, you got to look towards the under. Yeah. A lot of rushing play. I just want to um, point out uh, on the power ranking sheet here. These are the, the rushing projections for both teams, 181, 175. So um, yards. So those are massively high numbers for both teams. And what it implies is, um, and we see the same for Jacksonville, by the way, before, but what it implies is exactly what we're saying. Just a heavy emphasis on the run. It also means that both of these teams have been pretty bad against the run all season. So, I mean, those numbers, like I said, these are just massive rushing uh, projections for both New England and Detroit. I'm not so sure I'm confident that Detroit can get there with no Swift. You know, Jamal Williams, he's great. Did great last week, too. My goodness, right? Chalk, uh, chalk exploding to the positive side last week with Jamal. So, we'll see if he can do that again. And, John, I'm going to take a break real quick to talk about the sponsor of our show, Thrive Fantasy. And we've been talking about them every week on this show because I know you love overlay. You like beating games. You love overlay. So I'm just going to point out this, this contest they're running on NFL Sunday. And one of the cool things about prop, it's a, uh, about Thrive Fantasy. It's a prop game over unders, but they have the hybrid where they turn it into a tournament. And so here's how it works. Here's this $20 Sunday contest, 82 of 1,111 potential entry. Oh, actually, this is the bigger one. Here we go. Four, it's $100,000, 4,444 total entries. Right, that's a giant contest, and what I like about it is it never fills. They're giving away free money on Thrive. There is overlay galore here, and how the game works is you just basically pick um, from these over unders. They have points totals assigned to them, and the highest scoring person you pick ten of them. The highest scoring person wins the tournament, and there there are twenty uh, props here to choose from. It's pretty simple stuff. So I found that the best approach for Thrive is you want to pick, uh, obviously this seems obvious in hindsight, but you want to just find props that are over 100 to pick. You want to try to get over, you, you want to get over 100 on almost every prop that you pick. Um, any thoughts on that, John? Yeah, I, I would definitely agree with you there. What you also want to do is kind of look at the, uh, take the ratio between like, uh, you're looking at the Metcalf over there is 125, 75, you know, take that ratio and as well and and see am i getting uh you know if it's if it's 150 whatever it's two to one like am i am i getting is it double is, is it two to one or or uh two times more likely that whatever side it is is going to hit and um you know if, if you're getting a higher number than that hope i'm explaining it right then you probably want to jump on that and maybe sprinkle in a couple like you could get the josh allen under i'm just throwing it out there not that i like it but like you could do, you could do an under if it's if it's a high value like a ninety five or something like that. Yeah, you know, yeah, avoid the sixty five point ones. Yeah, I, I mean, I'd be all about the under. Exactly, right on Najee Harris. So, so like, I'll take the hundy. You know, that's fine. Um, yeah, like look at the. I mean, this, the lineup just builds itself. <laughs> you know, I mean, come on. You got to so, remember, you know, people are going to be doing that same strategy. That's why mixing in a couple of ninety ninety five type point plays it might be worth could it get you there and i and i want to mention it for anybody who's not signed up so so listen they want to fill this contest but we don't care we don't we just want to get overlay but if you're not signed up uh at thrive go check it out if you use promo code dfs army they literally will give you a free entry to this contest it's a 25 dollar ticket on top of a deposit match so if you do 50 dollar deposit they give you a 50 dollar match plus a ticket that's i mean that's a hundred and 50% ROI before you ever did anything. If you do a hundred, they're going to give you a hundred dollar deposit. They give you a hundred dollar match 
and two tickets to this tournament. That's $50 in tickets, $100 match, $150. Again, 150% ROI for doing nothing. I love it. I like free money. I like free stuff. Check out Thrive. And uh, take down that tournament. Uh, it's not too it's not too hard to do, especially when they're giving you free tickets. Um, all right, John, let's move on to the next game on the list here. We've got Seattle at New Orleans. Now, I, I'm, you know, it's a 46-point total. Saints, five-and-a-half-point home favorites. And I got to tell you, listen, and, and we just talked about Detroit as well. So I just want to say this. I am not expecting what happened last week. So last week, we were talking up Goff and freaking Geno Smith as DFS plays. And oh my goodness, did that work? I know you were loaded up on it. You almost yeah. took down the Millie Maker. It was like a Lazard touchdown away from being statsational that took out the 32 man um, uh, chain at the top of the Millie Maker. It wound up being someone else, but it was almost you. I was right behind him. Yeah, I needed one. Uh, I needed a decent yardage touchdown from uh, from Lazard. So we were there, we were close. But, uh, and Lazard had the good game. He just did not get the putty. Yeah, yeah. I think he was 24 points, 25 points. Yeah, yeah. just could not get the touchdown. And um, the pen, not that I didn't have Penny, but the, that Penny, uh, those those two late touchdowns where he just was untouched was uh, was the killer. That, I had that him, was awesome. Not in my, yeah, it was for. I mean, I you know I had him. I had plenty of Penny, but uh, just not in that lineup. So is is that insanity making you now like want to go crazy game stacks again and just be like two plus two and a quarterback uh is it is it is it scratching the insane correlation game stack hit? yeah i mean you know it's there's not that many again we're we, you know there's not a ton of great options again this week but we'll we'll see i mean i i've been mixing it up i haven't done it exclusively like i didn't exclusively game stack but that that particular game was my heaviest game and you know when when that happens it works out that's why i, I tell people to just you know you should have the same strategy at least line of construction do it on a weekend week out base it's a lot easier than trying to figure it out. And then when it hits, hopefully, you know, that that's the one that you, yeah. you, uh, you hit big. So kind of keep a lot of the, a lot of your variables, keep them, make them constants and then, uh, and change very few things week in, week out. A couple of mysteries about this game this week. Um, the Saints on uh, Kamara's practicing Kamara might be back. I would, I'd be very interested in Kamara if he does come back. I mean, again, this Seattle team is one you want to attack, with opposing offenses and um you know it looks like michael thomas will be out again which which puts olave back in the mix for quote unquote guy in a good matchup that is the only target on his team so a couple interesting dfs spots from the new orleans side from the seattle side uh it's a little bit less for me i, I do have one interesting play like i don't normally like to play running backs against the saints pretty good run defense or at least historically they've been pretty good let's see what happens this year? Um, I need a few more games of sample, but they have Marshawn Lattimore and he's probably going to lock up with DK Metcalf, which maybe opens up for a decent Tyler Lockett day. So that's about the only DFS angle I've kind of got for the Seattle side is maybe Tyler Lockett in the Marshawn Lattimore narrative situation. Um, and on the saints, if it's not Olave, I'm just, you know, Kamara starting will have no ownership. So that's mildly interesting for me, although, you know, I think he's in a great matchup. I don't know what not to like about it. I'm still not even sure who the quarterback it will be for the Saints. Will it be Winston? Will it be Dalton? I have no idea. Um, any bets here? A minus five and a half, Saints at home? I don't love it. Um, you know, that's always a weird number, that five, five and a half, but that's where it's at right now. 46 on the total. Um, you know, maybe, maybe this total is similar to that uh, Detroit game, and both of these teams played each other last, right? Seattle and Detroit last week, where maybe it's a little inflated just coming off of that that game last week. So you might get a little value to the underside. I know our model likes it on the under as well. So I think that would be maybe my only lean. And as I say that, I'm gonna probably have a, I'll have a little bit in, of uh, game stacking on this one in DFS, but not not a ton. There's just not a ton of game stacks that I like. There is one particular game that I like more than any of them, but this one I'll have I'll have a little bit of game stacking in it, but um, I don't expect it to be nearly what Seattle did last week. Yeah, I mean, looking at the power ranking sheet and the expectations here, um, it doesn't look like uh, either the Saints haven't been that great against the run or, or Seattle's rushing offense has been really good. Tough to know, but 
the passing offense for the Saints is what's popping here. 300 yard projection. Um, and it's not like they've been tearing it up. It's just that Seattle has been getting Seattle's torn bad. up. Yeah, yeah, Seattle's the worst defensive pass team right now. Um, and when I have that in when I when I have the um, the power rankings over on DFS Army, you know, and I kind of match up offensive defense, this is like they're second to Miami in um in how bad their pass defense is in relation to their, their pass offense has been really good. So I like that because yeah. I like it because our next game. We're talking Miami at the Jets. Jets are three-point home underdogs with a game total under 55 and a half, under 45 and a half, I'm sorry. And last week, Zach Milfson comes back from not having played at all. He didn't look amazing to me, John. I'm a Jets fan, but he didn't look that great. But when it counted at the end, he got the job done. It's the best I could say. That was a, uh, a a gut punch to a lot of survivor people, including myself. Um, that's unfortunate for you. Should not ever be betting. On no, the- that's golden rule of sports betting is don't bet against the Jets, right? No, don't bet the Steelers. Oh well, that that would that would be the non sarcastic with one. Trubisky yeah. at the helm. Yeah. Well, now now we got the new. It's a new era in Pittsburgh. So All we'll right. see. Well, let's so. For Miami, Tua will not play this week. I hope he has a career. I, I hope like what we saw wasn't like a season ender. No. I don't think it will be, but I hope not. Yeah. You never know with this stuff. But one one thought that I had just going into the slate research was is it really a big downgrade to go from Tua to Teddy Bridgewater like on a game over game basis? Is the is the line changing because it's Bridgewater and not Tua, John? Not a whole lot. And it's what is he lot. You know, when you look, well, zero? you look at this line. Yeah. I mean, you look at this line of minus three, right? Um, I mean, I guess we're probably looking at, uh, I mean, it's not a ton, but it, it, for a, for a quarterback, two or three points, maybe on this line. Yeah. I, I'm, uh, I'd be shocked if it was two or three. I, I just, I don't know that their win prospects are affected at all by Tua versus Bridge. British. It's not because Tua is bad. It's Bridgewater's a good, competent starting quarterback in the National Football League. He's not a going to lift your team and win games when I shouldn't guy, but I'm not sure Tua is that. Maybe Tua was getting there, but listen, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, everybody thought Tua was shit. Like he had the big game. Let's not go crazy. I just don't think it makes that big of a difference. I think Waddle will be fine. I think Tyreek Hill will be fine here. I think um, I'm... I'm I'm actually interested in Raheem Mostert in this game. You know, 75% carry share. He's he's becoming the lead back for his team. And I'm really curious. Let's take a look at the power ranking sheet. This is John's power ranking sheet. If you're in DFS Army, you can find it right there under the power rankings. I have to actually show people where things are, like video. It's right there. Power rankings, right? And um, for the Miami, uh, for this game, it does not look good for either running game, which is interesting, but both passing games project for above average passing yardage, especially the Jets. How bad has Miami been that they're pulling the Jets up to 325 yard projection just based on their badness? They're the second worst pass defense right now behind that Seattle team. So, um, and then when you combine how good their, their passing offense has been, They've been pretty good in stackable game stack situations. Is this the game stack of the week that you were alluding to earlier? It is not, oh. but uh, it, it is interesting uh, if you wanted to take a stab at, uh, at at a at a play. I don't love it, you know, with uh, because now I I I I think there's a bigger downgrade with Bridgewater than than maybe you do, um, and I'm still not in love. You know, Flacco was doing good good things at least fantasy wise. He was putting up some decent numbers. Oh, I, I do think it's a downgrade here. Yeah, I'm very worried about targeting Jets offensive players with Zach Wilson at that. Although, like I said, I don't know. It's mysterious. It's very GPP only. It's very mysterious. I have no clue what will happen. Just uh, quick on the on betting uh, on the betting side. I mean, all the money is really coming in on Miami here, which you would figure at the three. The Jets. I guess we'll find out a lot about the Jets this week. It's like. I mean, if the Jets could be a middle of the road team, I think that's a, a huge accomplishment this season. So um, that it would go a long way, even if it's a it's not Tua. But you can win a game like this, and certainly at home, only a three point spread, they could win. So the public not buying it, and I, you know, I, I always like 
being uh, being against the public, but I don't have anything yet on this game that I'm uh, I'm playing. But the uh, total as well, the over, people are bet- betting the over. Three quarters of the public, uh, or at least the money, is on the over side of this game. Well, I can see. I don't know. I don't know. I, um, again, backup quarterback for Miami. Jets with Wilson, very mysterious. Don't know if he's good. Again, did, Wilson did not pass the eye test for it. Like, I, he didn't look good. He didn't, didn't look horrible. Looked, yeah, I didn't think he looked very good either. But he he looked like he's he, – he, I don't – think he's looked very good yet in his career so no, he, he never has that's right well i've been saying that it's not like uh, technically he probably looked as good as he's ever looked because he's looked really bad i you know in watching the tape of that game i was hoping you know after the win i didn't watch it live that um i would see something that would give me hope as a jets fan. and, and I, I didn't get that i didn't get that i'm not gonna not gonna sugarcoat it didn't get it um but i do think garrett wilson is in play and, and elijah Moore. And, and if you want to play a running back on the jets Brees hall it doesn't uh, the, you know, the power rankings don't agree with paying playing running backs in this game. So it's making me rethink even being interested in Mostert here. Um, but, you know, if you needed to play one, I, I will say that Brees Hall seems to be emerging as the RB1, getting those RB1 carries or at least like 60-40 type split carries for the Jets. Um, all right, moving on, we've got the Falcons heading out to Tampa to take on angry Brady. He's got a lot of reasons to be angry, John. But we're going to focus it. on the football reason coming off a rough loss uh, against the Chiefs in which, I just want to say, we gave out over at the Sharp app, not just to take the Chiefs plus one. No, that wasn't enough. You want to tell you, this is a, the Gargano special of the week. Cuz Gargano, the wise guys on Fridays right here or over on the Sharp App YouTube channel. But not just not just KC plus one, KC minus three, KC minus seven, pizza bets galore. You know how much pizza I ate this week because of this bet, John? I gained like 15 pounds. Well, you see, the pizza bet is the uh, is the amount that you risked. It what? wasn't that you, were, you weren't supposed to be buying like thousand dollars worth of pizza. What the this is the first I'm hearing of this. It's the twenty dollars, or the, well, pizzas now. You know, a pie is probably even more than Wait, twenty dollars. I'm not supposed to buy pizzas with all the winnings. And Anthony's thing is, listen, at the cost of one pizza, I'm going to make this big bet. Son of a bitch! I've got pizzas in the freezer. I got them everywhere. I thought he was supposed to go out and buy pizza. I went to Agnello's. Okay, I went to the best place, the twenty six dollar pie. I don't. I. 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 I drove right past the football pizza. That's that's Calabria. I was over. I passed it. I was going to Agnello's because they got the twenty six dollar Patsy Grimaldi pizzas over there. Because I was like, I have a pizza bet. I had so much pizza bet money to spend on pizzas. I had to buy the more expensive kind. Yeah. I totally misunderstood what a pizza bet is. Yeah, that's that's his, pe- his pizza it. bet is it, for the cost of a pizza. We'll, we'll make a, a nice hit if we can win this bet totally went over i was just eating pizza you don't you, you don't understand the italians very well that's the that's i the love problem. pizza though i know you love pizza i but can't get enough of it you you lose the there's a lot of translation lost and you grew up in brooklyn that. you know you grew I, up around a bunch of italian guys in brooklyn but they always ate pizza too i just figured that's what a pizza bet was it just goes right over your head now. <laughs> all right all right so let's talk about this game the falcons are at the box the Bucs are eight and a half point home favorites. Angry Brady gets his weapons back. Godwin comes back last week. We saw him go down. He got back up, got back in the game. Godwin's going to be fine. Um, Mike Evans, beast mode. But the but the Bucs need a win. And this is a good team to get a win against because the Falcons are floundering right now. Just floundering. I don't know. There's no solution inside for these guys. Marcus Mariota not looking that good. They only let him throw 15 16 times a game. Kyle Pitts is is scoring fewer fantasy points than Johnny Munt over on the Colts. He's got fewer fantasy points than Tyler Conklin of the Jets. He's got fewer fantasy points than uh, Mo Alley Cox. The list goes on and on. I like this game from a DFS angles perspective on the Brady side. Angry Brady is somebody we want a piece of. And you could get it from anywhere. 
I can get it from Evans. I can get it from Godwin. I can get it from Fournette, or I could just go and put the man himself at the helm of my lineup, Tom Brady. I haven't played him really. I don't think at all, or, or once even this season because of the lack of weapons. But I think this week is, is Tom Brady week. What do you say? I agree. This is the kind of the one, this is the one that I like the best. Of wow. all the games. Not from a yeah. game stack though, from a team. Yeah. Well, from a team stack. Yeah. yeah. I don't love any of the game stack, but I'm going to use a lot of Tampa um, stacking. Yeah. Not so much the other side, but you know, I'm going to bring it back in this game with some pieces, but it's more Brady stacks. Um, just run it through it. My, some of my favorite players were, were Tampa Fournette. I like a lot this week, kind of the situation that uh, we're, we're looking for. So I think it's Fournette. You could probably use them with Brady and a wide receiver. I don't mind that at all um, if you want to go that route. So, but just from a uh, from a, a betting standpoint, big line actually just moved I, as I refreshed the sharp app. Um, one of the so you could actually get it at eight now at some sports books. So it was eight and a half 30 seconds ago, now down to eight. And uh, you could get nine still. So probably by the time you oh, watch this, that's that. going to change. Lines yeah. changing in real time. Um, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Um, I got to, I mean, on the Atlanta side, Cordero Patterson's out. You know, the power rankings here predicts a lot of rushing yards for Atlanta, but uh, 155. And I'm not sure people can see this. It's really small um, on the YouTube screen, but 155 uh, rushing yards for Atlanta is the prediction there. And my question is, uh, you know, Cordero's out. I'm not feeling that at all. But has Tampa been bad against the run this season? They've been no, they've been above average. The problem, the um, Atlanta's been just really, really good r- with the run. But um, you know, part of that's going to be Mariota as well. So you got to take that into account. He's probably going to be worth, uh, you know, without looking, probably what thirty yards, something like yeah, that. Yeah, 20, get- 20, 30. He had yeah. seventy plus yards week one. He hasn't done a whole lot. Yeah, but he does run every week at least for a few yards. So he's going to be part of that, and like you said, Patterson out. So Tampa's defense—they've been fine. They just—they haven't been—they haven't been dominant yet against the run, but they've been—they've—they've uh, they've certainly been okay. So acceptable. it's not like some seed change where they're bad against the run now. No, they're sort of middle. Of, I can tell you exactly where they are right now, but they're—they're they're sort of middle. They're a little bit better. They're—they're they're, what are they? Uh, a thirteenth overall. So. All right, they have room to grow. I, I, you know, Tampa's traditionally been a don't target running backs against these guys kind of a team, but they haven't quite done that this season. So we'll see how that goes. I, I'm not excited about Tyler Algier or whoever the hell else they're going to roll out at running back um, for the Falcon. Caleb Huntley. Yeah, it's Tyler not pretty here. Not pretty. No. Um, Algier might be all right. I mean, he's a promising rookie, but I mean, come on. All right. Yeah. Um, I, are you betting this? Are you taking the minus eight? Yeah, I don't like the, no, I don't like the line 48 and a half on the total. Um, none of that interests me at all. I do like Tampa minus eight. I wish it was minus six and a half. Um, I just don't think Atlanta can score. And when, when Tom Brady starts putting it on, they will have no answers. The, the, the Falcons won't have an answer for this. I don't even, I never lay the points. I'm Mr. Don't lay the point. I never do it. I kind of want to lay the points here, but if I'm maybe if I was in a teaser, can I, you know, maybe just grab a couple you of could te- actually you want to tease this down. This is a nice teaser down. So you get this at two, you cross the seven and the uh and the three, which is uh which I totally forgot mm-hmm. about. That's what I paired up the uh the Washington. Teaser That's with. what I was just thinking. Yeah. That other teaser bet paired up with this one, get a little get a little um double action going. So I like the sound of that. All right, next up. John, we've got a blowout situation. Buffalo at home taking on the Steelers, the Kenny Pickett Steelers. It's a rough spot for Pittsburgh on the road. You know, the Bills, I mean, I think the biggest, uh, do you lay 14 here is the first question. It's a lot. I rarely do. And I would say, go ahead and you can lay it here at the 14. I think, I think Buffalo just comes out and just rolls here. Rookie quarterback, good defense. Uh, you know, not just a rookie quarterback. This is his first start on the road in Buffalo. Tough place for him to, to get his first start. You don't want to go at ball. And this is the best defense in the league right now. He threw 13 passes last week. None of them hit the floor. The problem was three of them were caught by the Jets. So this could this game could get ugly quick. This 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 probably will get ugly. You know, 
this could be one of those ones where the Bills are up like 31 to nothing, you know, through three, and then they take the starters out. Like that, that is the threat here. Don't go anywhere near Najee Harris in this game. No, I'm not touching anything on the Steelers. I'm benching Najee Harris in season long. If I've got like, you know, anybody with, with a pulse, I don't even know what the names are. Like I'm, I'm anyone with a pulse. I'm benching Najee Harris for then on the Steelers side. The big question on the, on the Buffalo side, the big question of this game is, you know, listen, Josh Allen's awesome. His weapons are great. We love them all. We we love it. Somebody's got to score those points. But how much can we load up on a game where the team that we're loading up on is going to be dominating defensively, maybe scoring defensive touchdowns, which really screws up things when you want to try to accumulate fantasy points for your offensive players. But we've also seen Buffalo in these blowout situations, just like, yeah, Josh Allen has a comfortable 33 fantasy point day. You know, Davis randomly has two touchdowns in the game because they're just styling. You know, anything can happen here. I don't know what to do with it DFS-wise. I think you just play the Buffalo pieces and just hope that you pick the right one. Devin Singletary is even even live here. Yeah, I, I would totally agree. Because, yeah, normally I would say you want to avoid those situations, but I think Allen could easily just put up a ton of points in the first half of this game. Um, you know, we've seen it, like, with Lamar and Allen before those type of with Mahomes, we've seen them in these situations, double digit favorites and put up big, big points. So yeah. don't, don't shy away from Allen. There's danger in it though. There's danger. Of course there's a very clear path. Like last week, I didn't almost see any path to a horrible game for Allen. And it, you know, he didn't smash the slate open, but he had a fine, game. he didn't crush your cash game. Like it was fine. Um, this week, you know, there is a, the path is defensive touchdown running back gets one other defensive touchdown. You know, like he just doesn't, he gets you 20, he gets you. 18. Yeah. I mean, if it's 28, nothing at the half and he's thrown for one fifty with one touchdown and then they just kind of call off the dogs in the second half, it's not going to be that, you know, that, that it won't be great, but if he can throw for one run for one and you know, the game's like 28, 10, then they're still playing in the second half and we got it and we got a shot. Now, John, we're we're getting towards the end of the games here, and I'm I still haven't found the game that you want to load up on. No, well, it, I misspoke. Tampa was the one I was really okay. talking about. That's yeah, just been I, awful. it wasn't the game that I wanted, but oh, I, but that's a team that I'm going to stack up on. Yeah, and there there are some maybe games in the 4 p.m. slate that there, there's at least one game that kind of is mildly interesting. But man, there's a lot of low scoring games here on this slate in general. But here we have a medium scoring game: the Chargers out in Cleveland. Taking on the Brownies, 47 and a half point total. The Browns are home two and a half point favorite. It's hanging around the three point line. So, John, you've got to have a you got to have a bet for this one. Chargers, Cleveland, two and a half points. What do you think of this one? How do you see it going? Yeah, so two and a half pretty much everywhere. 47 and a half on the total, which is actually one of the highest totals we we have on the board. This week, right? There's only uh, maybe two weird. games higher. Yeah. Having Cleveland as part of the highest total game, a team with Brissett and a bunch of running backs. I, I don't, it's crazy, but Brissett's yeah. been fine. Like basically they upgraded their quarterback over, over Baker Mayfield with Brissett. And then they, yeah, they'll, that's fair. they should get, they should get better obviously when, uh, when Watson comes back. But, but um, yeah, I, I have no problem with the, uh, with the Cleveland offense in this game. So I, again, this, this falls into my teaser area where I can take the two and a half up to eight and a half and, and that's what I'm going to probably do. I just got to figure out Wait, on the gonna... charger side or the Cleveland side. No, we're going to take the Cleveland side plus two and okay. a half and we'll, and we'll jack that up to eight and a half that I like Cleveland at home getting eight and a half. This is the, this is um back-to-back -back road games here now for the chargers. We'll see. Obviously they looked a lot better, but they let, you know, they let uh Houston right back in that game last week, gave me a cover. I had Houston plus the points gave us a cover in that game. So the Chargers just have not been, that dominant so far this year. Yeah. What's the, what do we have on the, uh, as far as the power ranking? I mean, it, 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 um, I'll, I'll go to the power ranking side of it, but I, I will say here, it does love Cleveland and actually, you know, technically predicting it's got them even uh, a win. And, and yeah. yeah. And, and um, you've got Cleveland 180 yards projected on the ground here, which tells me the chargers rush defense has not been great. And that is traditionally, they haven't been the best they're missing uh, last week. At least they were missing some defensive players. One of the Bosa brothers, Joey, 
Yeah, that, that's how I think they keep it close, Cleveland. I, I just think, you know, they, they run the ball. You get your 200, 220 yards from Brissett, and you keep this one inside of a touchdown. Now, the overall power rankings definitely have the Chargers 14th, Cleveland 20th. So, um, you know, just those metrics here. But Cleveland's at home. I like the idea of the teaser. I really love it. It didn't even occur to me on that one to just tease Cleveland up because we've already identified two other potential tease spots on this slate. Just pair yeah, them you up. Can, you could try to, up. yeah, you could try to do all three and hit it for like uh, whatever that is, plus 170 or, or I'm sorry, yeah, minus, uh, I forget what the number is on that. Yeah, see, that's stuff, yeah. that's stuff that like, I mean, that really, I, I like that kind of bet. I, I like that thought. And it's a lot of what you're talking about over and what we're talking about over in the Sharp App Discord on a regular basis. So make sure that you guys are signed up, uh, that you, if you've downloaded the Sharp App and if you haven't, get it now, but jump in, click the Discord button on there, get in that Sharp App Discord because we're talking the bets, strategizing, breaking down different approaches and ones that you might not think of. It's not just against the spread. These teasers are really awesome. And, and, John, you've taught me that whenever it's like a two and a half or an eight or anywhere in those key numbers, I should be thinking tease. It's been, I mean, for years, I've made money looking at those type of plays. It's been awful this year. So, I mean, it's just small sample size. So I'm saying they're going to start, these, they're going to start hitting here. So if you want to start looking at these teasers, I'd start playing them. There we go. I love it. All right. San Francisco at the Panthers. 49ers. Six and a half point favorite on the road, taking on Carolina. Carolina, Baker Mayfield, the aforementioned, they hate him already in Carolina. What's the excuse this year for Baker Mayfield, John? Last year it was, I got a hip problem, I got a shoulder injury. What's the excuse? Excuse is, I mean, he's just not a good quarterback. I mean, I've been saying that with, with Cleveland. I thought he was holding them back in Cleveland. I think I've been proven right here. And uh, and he's he's just killing Carolina as well. I mean, this is just not that great a team. He somehow, we were looking for the guy who can, uh, who can stop McCaffrey and we found them. I mean, McCaffrey has succeeded with the worst of the worst. This guy has actually ruined Christian McCaffrey. I will say Christian McCaffrey. I mean, look at the projection for yardage 52. Yeah, it's awful. 52. Are you serious? That's the lowest on the slip. They have Christian McCaffrey. That's crazy. It's great. Look, look at what they've done. You know, for I mean, they're one of the worst teams. They're, they're throwing it for 50 yards under what their opponents have given up, and they've rushed it for 20 yards under what their <laughs> opponents have given up. I mean, they don't – most teams are like, you know, they're kind of positive on one side and negative on the other. They're just at the bottom of both. I mean, they are the worst. I've got Indianapolis as the worst defense, their uh, offense – and they're right behind it's, it's, or right in front it, of them. So it's horrid. Okay. DJ Moore, untouchable. Um, Christian McCaffrey's kind of untouchable in this game. This San Francisco defense is legit. Okay. If MC Hammer were here, what would he call them? Too legit. That's the too legit. Do you remember that? I, I that is, was so wanting you to say it. You want me to say too legit? Too, too legit, legit to, to quit. quit. You knew the that whole was, thing. Dude, it's a, that was the Deion Sanders, man. Remember, he was in the video. I can't believe he said it. All right. Um, <laughs> they are legit, San Francisco. Put a beat down on the Rams last week. Debo Samuel looks like Debo Samuel. That's my bike punk of last year, not the Debo Samuel. Would you mind um, lending me your bicycle that we saw in the first games of this season? Yeah. yeah. Different Dude, version of Debo. It, it's super interesting though, like because we're talking about how the the totals have changed. I got to look at what we're at. We were at forty two, uh, the average the average total in an NFL game. If I look, I got the numbers right here um, at what it is now. So now it's it's bumped up. It's just under for it's forty three point eight, right? So it's getting a little closer to probably where we're going to be when the season's over, maybe forty five, something like that. But we keep saying it as we're going over all these games. Is like, yeah, this team's just kind of trying to play it close to the vest, let the defense win it for him. I mean, we said it with Chicago. Kind of looks like that's how Cleveland's going to play a little bit. San Francisco, that's what San Francisco wants to do, right? Just San Francisco's just really good at it, typically. Like, they've got good players. So the defense is really good, and then they've got good offensive players that can that can uh, shine their, like Debo. Their team is built to play this style. Um, so when their defense is clicking on San Francisco, 
They're they're hard to stop, even without an elite running back. You know, Jeff Wilson Jr. Fine, but it's a lot of Debo Samuel out there. They, I don't they've never had an elite running back. No, yeah, that's right. They've been doing it, throwing just any guy in there. Um, I, I think we're gonna get more of the same. I think it's a scary game to try to grab DFS pieces from. George Kittle is dead to me. Dead yeah, to me. Kittle's dead. Th this is not a DFS game. He's also he's not priced at the right price for what he does. So he is dead to me um, on DFS. I'm not even discussing him anymore until his salary is commensurate with past performance. Um, as far as yeah, the only player is Debo Samuel, and I don't I don't know if I'll get there. This he's very he's actually priced down. I like Debo on FanDuel. He's underpriced on FanDuel. He's a really, really good play there. Um, he's a touchdown scorer. He's actually exactly what you want on FanDuel. I'm loading up on you know what? I'm core playing Debo on FanDuel. 73 Hundo. He's one of the cheaper uh elite wide receivers, and he's a touchdown scorer more than almost any other one. You load up on him on FanDuel, but DraftKings, you know, not as much. How do you like that? A little FanDuel DraftKings contrast for the game plan. If you don't play on both sites. You can't do this. But one of the things I do is if one guy is cheaper here, I just play him here because the ownership doesn't reflect the realities. Like if like a guy is relatively cheaper on FanDuel, I just load up on them more on FanDuel then I full fade him on DraftKings because why wouldn't you? It's not like the ownership changes enough. It's not like, oh, I got to go up against everybody who's playing that guy on FanDuel. No, they don't. It doesn't, it doesn't affect the ownership. Not that much. So... Anywho, little little pro tip there. Let's move on. Oh, wait. Did we talk about a bet here? I mean, are you laying the points six and a half? No. Yeah, no? No, I can't. I I can't lay the points. I mean, I, I could see that being the side. Um, you know, it's tough to back Carolina in this game. I mean, the public likes it. Three quarters of the money's on uh, on the San Francisco side. Makes sense. And we got about two thirds of the money on the under. Uh, also makes sense as to where people will be looking on this game. Um, you wait. know, that 39 and a half is the total. It's crazy. It's a very low. It under. Yeah. Matt rule, man. It's going back to college next year. He might be. All right. Um, all right. Let's move on. We've got a couple games left on the main slate. Eagles at Arizona. Now this looks like the game of the week, although, and isn't it funny that it's a 49 point total is the biggest total on the slate. And, and it's a five and a half, like it's mildly competitive. And that's the game of the week. This is a, this, this whole week sets up really weird. By the way, I did my first look lineup video and everyone's like, you know, this kind of went weird. And, and it's a, it's a weird week. There's no game that shoot jumps off the screen at you. There's one team though. And that team is Philadelphia. I like this team better than the Brady, except you're just paying up for the pieces, the Brady version you're paying down. But um, you know, Jalen Hurts right at the same salary at this point as Josh Allen. The difference here is he gets a competitive potential game, although I'm not sure, against the Cardinals. And, um, you know, everything about Josh Allen, these Eagles looks really good. A.J. Brown, even Devontae Smith is getting involved. Um, you know, Arizona side, you've got Zach Ertz sort of as a prime piece, a couple of wide receivers that have like Marquise Brown's been getting 12, 13, 14 targets the last couple of weeks. Um, not doing a whole lot with him, but he's getting them. Do you see a betting angle here? Uh, minus five for the Eagles. I would love to, if the Eagles were minus three, I'd be like hammering this. I, I think I still think you could take the minus five though. I would lean that way. Yeah, I agree. I mean, it'll never get down to three. Um, Phillies just look too good. Everyone, everyone kind of likes Philly. Yeah. So that that's the way everyone's going. And of course we're getting 80% of the money coming in on the Philly side right now. Again, that makes sense. And then the the over, which I tend to agree with as well. I think this game does go over, but we have been seeing that with the with the uh, Eagles games, a lot of them going under just because the, the Philly defense is just better. That's than, that's uh, the concern here, think. isn't it? Eagles defense is right up there with the Bills. They they they're shutting people down. Two elite cornerbacks, um Darius Slay and James Bradbury. Like who who are the Cardinals throwing to? They can throw to Ertz. Yeah, it's going to be – yeah, probably Ertz. It's going to be an issue. I think Goddard has a, has a really nice game here, though, when, when you talk about tight ends. I like Goddard in this game. But when you look at Philly, uh, again, when you when you look at the power ranks and you look at that, the number, that offensive passing number combined with the defensive passing, they've 
they've just not been a very good team to to stack with. So I'd be leery on this game. I wouldn't be crushing it. I do like, you know, I do like some Philly side of this game, but I think that's your risk here is just the fact that Philly has they've got the second best defense according to to my numbers or the third yeah, best. Let's, They're let's right there. The power rankings. I it's love Buffalo, San Fran, and Philly are right there with each other. So I mean, this Philly defense has just shut people down. I'd be I'd be leery about game stacking. I wouldn't be afraid of playing Philly. I wouldn't necessarily be afraid of playing some pieces for Arizona, but I wouldn't go too heavy on the game stacks here. Look at these projections. I love by the way, this is the thing that I use the most when building lineups. And and it's really, really important if you're playing DFS um and you're you're a DFS Army subscriber that you're checking this um power rankings. No one has something like this. But the projection for Arizona passing yards 170 is horrible. Tells you to get off. It's it says stay away from this situation. And the rushing yards at 104 with a running quarterback who, by the way, has not run barely at all this year. Yeah, that that's that's I like the Eagles. I think the uh, it's not a good spot on paper for Arizona. All right, last game of the main slate, John. The Rams are at home. Taking on the cow, uh, the Cowboys. Cowboys shockingly good this year. Man, everybody's talking about the Eagles. The Cowboys are good too. Everybody's talking about the Eagles. What about the Cowboys with Cooper Rush? Killing it. So they get the Rams. The Rams, the Rams are in trouble. They're in some big trouble. And um, they can't win games against decent to good defenses. They just can't protect the quarterback. Matt Stafford hasn't had a good game yet. I don't, it's so opposite from last year. Is there precedent for this, John? Last year, they were fine. They went to the Super Bowl. Now they stink. What what, what the hell's going on here? Yeah, they won this. I'm trying to think of the last Super Bowl team that... that uh, struck. I mean, we don't know how bad they are yet. Four games. They just... Listen, they came up against a really, really good defense on Monday night. And the problem is they're coming up against a really, really good defense again. Now, um, are they as good good as San Francisco? Probably not as good, but they're, they're damn good. And they're going to give, listen, they have problems on that offensive line, the Rams and Dallas is going to give them fits. Dallas is going to get in that backfield. The other thing is from, from a fantasy standpoint and the Rams, I mean, they're, they're using one guy. (laughs) I mean, it's amazing how much that you, I've never seen anything no, like Higby. it, but let's, let's give Higby and Higby. Credit you got to, you got to put Higby in there as well. But I mean, Robinson is like, I see people talking about, he's a drop in season long leagues and it's like, wow. I mean, yeah, no, he's dust. Um, it's time. I, I, I put out the tweet. I sent out a mea culpa to all my followers on Twitter, all seven of them. They follow my, my, this is follow my fantasy football plays. I was like, guys, I'm sorry, but no, we we fucked up. He's not good. We smoked the hopium, and we got we got. Hold on, this we were talking about we were talking about Allen Robinson, and we this is what happened. Hopium. Oh, so good. It felt good when we did it, but then after the after effect of losing. All of your weeks in fantasy football, it feels horrible. I'm having withdrawal. It's like when you go to the strip club and then you look at your credit card bill the next day and you're like, oh, man, I had so much fun. Then you look at your girlfriend or your wife. Yeah, well, I don't know. That could go either way, I guess. But uh, (laughs) no, it's usually when when you look at that credit card receipt and then you go, oh, man, man, was it really worth the fun? Doesn't feel good. No. Hopium. Yeah. There's a lot of hopium being smoked on Al Robinson. We were hoping he was going to be good. It didn't work out. It was a disaster. So, yeah, they're throwing to one guy. One nice thing about that is they're only throwing to one guy. And he's not someone that can be covered most weeks. So. Yeah, people are complaining about him. Like, it's not like he's not catching everything they throw to him. So. He's complaining about him. With the I hear people, oh, go on Twitter. And they're like. The, the nonsense that's being spewed. And I'm like, 
I, I apparently it's probably people who own like uh well you're not allowed to say own anymore but who uh we, we are allowing it oh we're allowing it on the yeah. DFS army yeah but uh you know people who just uh own shares of robinson or you know someone like their complaint but i'm like it's not like he's not catching the ball and you know if they're throwing to a guy and he's dropping it he's not open then i say i agree with you but hey if he's the only guy getting open and even when he's not open he's making plays then I, you know, I, I don't get it there now. No, I, I think now for the success a, of a team, you, you'd like to have a few more options here. The, the team, I said this week one, week two, week three, the team needs Allen Robinson to be good if they're going to be good this year. And the problem is they're not achieving that. They're also not achieving having a good running back between Cam Akers and um, Darrell Henderson split in time. Neither of them looking very good. And, and, and the pendulum swings back and forth between those two running backs with seemingly no semblance of a pattern it's just like oh this week is Darrell Henderson getting more and they both stink they're both not scoring enough to be fantasy relevant so and this ain't the spot if they were heavily favored okay but this isn't it um it is interesting to me so on the sports book Dallas getting five John getting five and a half yeah I I would have I'm a little scared with it right because again this one looks kind of easy and when you get that team off of a off a Monday night national game um, and they look really bad, the public is just going to always come in against, especially as a favorite here, five and a half points. And that's kind of what we're seeing. I mean, it's not as drastic as I thought, but it's a 60-40 split on the money coming in on the um, on the Dallas side, 60-40 on the tickets as well. It's kind of it's kind of um, even on both of those. And then the total is right around two, uh, double the money on the over which is interesting. So the total is 43 and a half. I don't know if I really like the over personally, but I would be leery. Like, you know, your, your head tells you Dallas, just because if you've watched the last few weeks, five and a half looks like too many points. I, I'd be a little concerned here that the Rams don't just come out and win this game by, you know, 10 points. Could and be. they're still a good, you know, they're still a good team. They're yeah. not one of the best teams in the league, but uh, I think there's a little overreaction on both in both directions here to Dallas being as good as they, they are. And, and the Rams not being as good as uh, people think they are. So I like that thought process, especially one team coming off the win, the other one coming off the loss. The lines are usually wrong in those scenarios because exactly what you just said. We all think um, the Rams just suck now, and we all think Dallas is this great team. But the reality is Dallas is a team operating with a backup quarterback, and the Rams are a Super Bowl winning team that literally brought back all of the players from that team. So Something's got to give there. Um, I like it. Um, and that's going to wrap it up, John, for the main slate NFL week five. I, I will say there's an exciting Sunday night game. I I'd say the best of the games are Sunday and Monday night. But we're going to save those breakdowns. Um, if you want to check out John's breakdowns for those games, his bets, his rankings, everything, guys, make sure you've downloaded the Sharp app. You got to check it out. It's awesome. It's free. I love I love the top props that you're putting out as articles. I love a lot of what Anthony's doing over there. So, um, and of course, just following the picks and being in the game center. One of the things I've been doing is I go in the game center when I bet props, and I just use the um, the player stats column in the game center to know if I've covered my props. It's really really um, timely. So I just kind of hang out in there. I'm like, ah, over five or set over four and a half receptions, Curtis Samuel last week. No problem. Over eight. Uh, receptions, Cooper Cup last week, boom, no problem. Just crushing props, crushing bets. Yeah, uh, props are fun. Yeah. And we're getting great feedback with the app, so. Yeah, I love it. So that, that's awesome to hear. And again, we have the Discord, the Sharp App Discord as well. And of course, if you're not signed up for DFS Army and you're watching this and you're looking to crush some DFS, we literally, everybody won the showdown. Did you see this on Monday night? I did I, not. I took down the FanDuel one. And tied with the fewest people I've ever tied with. Only four. Nice. 11 K. I'll take Very it. Very nice. On Very a FanDuel nice. showdown? Absolutely. Um, on DraftKings, the third lineup that the domination station generated was the nuts. Everybody got it. I of course it was giant tie groups for a lot of them, but I saw some seventy five hundred dollar wins. I saw some five K winners. I'm not sure. The Millie, um, I was like seventy five hundred for the giant tie. There were some other contests, so it was a win fest, and we've done it over and over and over this season. It's been consistent. 
taking down showdowns nonstop. We took the Millie Maker in week one. If you want to be winning in DFS, you join DFS Army. Everybody knows this. Get in there. Let's go. Use promo code GEEK, 10% off. It's going to raise the price this soon. No more 10% off. Raise that shit. All right. That'll do it for this one, John. The game plan, NFL Week 5. Um, John at Statsational on Twitter. If you guys want to talk to him, check him out or get in the DF, get in the Sharp Discord and ask him a question. He's in there hanging out all day. He's got nothing to do. Nothing Strippers, to do. betting, and Sharp app. That's, That's it. it. Um, that'll do it for us as well. We'll see you guys next time. Good luck this week, everybody. We hope to see you at the top of those leaderboards. <music> Thank you.